Hey, how's it going? The other day, my good friend Thierry on Reaper user group asked this great question. He says, sometimes I get confused as to where the signal is routed, sent from my track to my ears, which buses or folders get juiced from my track and by how much they route back into my mixer. Is there a way to better graphically overview routing with meters or something? like selecting a track and see a diagram of the signal flow. Dreamer, other people in the forum related to this question, some provided some tips like the track wiring, which we'll look at today. My other good buddy, Phil, suggested a great article. And I said I'd do a video, so here's that video. This is my journey into finding ways of tracing the lineage of a track to stay true to Reaper's terminology. I want to be able to look at any track and see which tracks are its parents, who are its children, and who has it married meaning does it send or receive any signal from tracks outside its family this question finally led me to what i think is an area in which reaper needs immense improvement this is the story of tracing a signal in reaper from the simple to the dumb to the finicky to the convoluted let's start with the simple the simple way of finding where a track goes is by simply clicking on its routing IO window. You can click on it in your TCP or optionally assign a hotkey to it so you don't have to expand tracks on larger projects like this. I set mine to Command, Control, Option and I. Hit it and you will see this window. Here you can see if the track is sending to the master or a parent and you can see which tracks, if any, it sends to and receives from. This is simple and straightforward enough. You can see the track names and number of sends, receives and parents, however, you don't see a track children nor any indication if there are children and you can only trace its lineage one generation meaning you only see its parents and not parents of its parents so maybe the simple way isn't good so let's look at the finicky so reaper also has the routing matrix open by hitting option and r here we can see the parents of our tracks the ones that have f on them are being sent to a parent track and they're also sending to the drum bus and we can see for example our juno pad and our hi-hat and snare and overheads are going to a reverb our operator and guitars are going to a delay and our lead guitar distortion is going to an amp simulator which then the amp simulator itself is going to a reverb in logic projects though this still doesn't help us too much we're looking to quickly glance at the information we need and the routing matrix by design is not ideal for this the routing matrix is great for creating routings but not for tracing them the reason is that the matrix shows every conceivable routing option in your project from any input to any track, from any track to any other track and from any track to any output. All combinations are possible. So in a modest 94 track project, you will see 8,836 squares here. So it's pretty confusing. Reaper 6 introduced track wiring. This is a node-based routing option familiar to people who use Max MSP, Logic Pro's environment, Da Vinci's Fusion or Native Instruments Reactor. There's a video by Kenny Joya, which I will link up here, that explains track wiring in full detail. Here you can finally view a project as a family tree. The master at the top, the folders below that, all their children below them, and all sends indicated to the corresponding family via cables that are colored the same way as their receiving end. This makes tracing easy, except I made it look like this. By default, the tracks are laid left to right from master to the last track. Track wiring is still in its infancy. It has no actions assignable to it, no mouse modifiers. Even navigating through this window in larger projects is only possible by clicking and dragging the handles on the bottom on the sides. You can't zoom in or out meaning you can't see the whole project anyway. And if you are up for arranging the display manually, it'll take you ages as you can't select multiple tracks. You have to manually drag every single track until it looks how you want it. I'm sure with time Reaper will introduce these features and some quicker ways of navigating preferences for how you like your tracks laid out, like family tree style, top to bottom, left to right, and so on. But for now, having to rearrange my tracks one by one on a project by project basis makes this method convoluted and not very useful for me. I will also confess that I'm a few updates behind in Reaper as I like to do. So let me know in the comments if any recent updates have made some of this stuff possible. But from a cursory glance, I don't see drastic enough improvements that make track wiring user friendly for larger projects. Now to the complicated way. As I explored these avenues, it dawned on me that I can probably create a custom action to do all of this. And I did succeed 
partially. I went through all actions and finally came up with this custom action called show track lineage. So if we look at this custom action, it first shows only sends of selected tracks, meaning it will hide all other tracks. Then it will select children of selected folder tracks and show them. Then it waits a bit and then shows the parents of those tracks. Let's see it in action. I'm going to select one of my tracks like the French horn sum. I'm going to run it and now I see its children, which are the different articulations of the French horn. I see its parent, the brass VCA. And finally, I see the brass reverb, which it sends to. That works pretty well. It's a good idea to save the default layout of your TCP before you run this project so that you can always go back to the way it was. However, this action behaves differently with different tracks. It works fine with mid-level tracks, those with parents and children, but it still only goes up one generation. And the same action doesn't work for tracks with no sends on them because the first action will hide all the tracks and that's the end of that or when tracks have tons of receives on them, you can't use the same action. You can solve this issue by creating a cycle action with if and else statements, but that is complicated even more than this and a whole other topic, making this method the complicated and foolhardy one. So we looked at a few ways of answering a very simple question. Each one works in some areas and fails in others. By now you're probably saying, hey dude, I was fine just using routing and I can't disagree. This is definitely an area though where Reaper can improve a lot. I think the track wiring system is amazing once it's further implemented into the reaper workflow once you can have mouse modifiers to select say a track and its children or move and snap groups of tracks quickly as well as allowing for scrolling mouse modifiers to work in this window like they do in the routing matrix in the meantime we can apply what we learned today to how we design our project layouts reapers folder tracks feature is awesome it works well and some seven years after it was introduced in reaper avid subscribers are literally creaming their pants over the same feature still very primitive in Pro Tools. Those little indentations are a good way to trace the lineage of a track. A good practice could be to include all auxiliary tracks under the same folder structure as whatever tracks they are receiving from. Another method could be to have an FX parent folder that you can collapse on the bottom of your project and running the command select tracks with active routing to select the tracks whenever you want to see what tracks each parallel FX is receiving from. After you selected the received tracks, just run the show track lineage custom command and it should show you the lineage of your track. Save those as templates and over time, you will be familiar enough with the structure of your mixing templates that you won't even need a system for this. So yeah, here we are. I wish I had a more exciting ending for this, but I don't. Still, I hope you found this explorative journey useful, a very different video from our usual rapid fire tutorial series. And let me know in the comments if I missed anything. If you do this differently than the ways I showed here, I'd love to know your method. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow with a rapid fire tutorial on automation modes. Peace in the Middle East. Bye-bye.